the Department of Defense for the fiscal year ending September 30th, 2019, and for other purposes, and ask for its immediate consideration. The clerk will report the title of the bill. H.R. 6157, an act making appropriations for the Department of Defense for the fiscal year ending September 30th, 2019, and for other purposes. Pursuant to House Resolution 1077, the conference report is considered read. The gentleman from New Jersey, Mr. Freelandhausen, and the gentlewoman from New York, Ms. Lowy, each will control 30 minutes. The chair recognizes the gentleman from New Jersey, Mr. Freelandhausen. Mr. Speaker, I ask unanimous consent that all members may have five legislative days in which to revise and extend the remarks. Without objection. Mr. Speaker, I yield myself uh, such time as I may consume. The gentleman is recognized. Mr. Speaker, uh, it's my honor this afternoon to, to present the conference report for H.R. 6157. This conference report provides full year funding for the Department of Defense, for the Department of Labor, Health and Human Services, Education and related agencies. It also includes a continuing resolution through December 7th, 2018 for federal government programs and agencies not covered by the enacted appropriations legislation. Congress has no greater duty than to provide for our common defense. This legislation fulfill, fulfills its constitution, constitutional responsibility. The Department of Defense is now set to receive its full funding on time for the first time in over 10 years. Providing this stability and predictability to our military leaders is a necessary and welcome step as we rebuild our armed forces. For far too long, their dedication to duty has been weakened by declining and uncertain budgets. Congress has turned that around, beginning with significant investments in last year's omnibus and continuing this year with an additional $17 billion in base funding for the Department of Defense. In total, the conference report provides $674.4 billion for our armed forces, consistent with levels that are authorized. This funding ensures our troops have the resources they need to defend our nation and succeed in their global missions. This includes funding to sustain ongoing overseas contingency operations and to support increased troop levels. It also ensures our warfighters have the training, readiness, and other resources needed to prepare for their missions, and a pay raise of 2.6%. This conference report also replenishes our military might, investing $148 billion in new and modernized equipment and weapons platforms and $96.1 billion for research and development to improve the lethality, effectiveness, and safety of our defense systems. In addition to this critical funding for our national defense, this legislation also includes funding for vital domestic programs. The Labor, Health, and Human Services and Education Appropriations Bills provides $178 billion for programs that protect the health, education, and labor standards for, that all Americans deserve. And funding is directed to programs that have wide national benefit, in particular the National Institutes of Health, which receives a $2 billion increase to bolster its life-saving research. Notably, funding to fight the opioid abuse epidemic receives historic funding levels, totaling $6.6 billion. This will support treatment, prevention, research, and efforts to end this national crisis. Another top priority is increased funding to keep our children safe in schools. This includes funding for mental health and other protective measures. Lastly, the Labor HHS bill invests in our future, creating economic opportunity and helping students get ahead and be part of a well-trained 21st century workforce. In addition to these two appropriations bills, as I mentioned earlier, the conference report includes a continuing resolution for the remaining areas of the federal government not covered by this or previous bills that, we've already, that have already been signed into law. This will assure that the government indeed stays open for business. Upon enactment of this legislation, Congress will have provided full year funding for three quarters of the federal government. But there's more work to be done on the remaining appropriations bills. Mr. Speaker, this legislation 
is yet another step forward to our goal of returning to what we call regular order and fully funding the federal government for the fiscal year. It is a product of months of hard work on the parts of our conference committee, led by Chairwoman Kay Granger and Chairman Tom Cole, along with uh, Ranking Member Peter Fisklowski and Ranking Member Rosa DeLauro. I want to thank them, of course, and I especially want to thank my counterpart, Ms. Lowy from New York, uh, my ranking member who has worked with me through this process as well as earlier bills, and we've had a, a friendship for well over 20 years of service uh, jointly on the Appropriations Committee. And yes, may I thank our Senate counterparts for helping us complete our, this work as well. This conference report would not be on the floor today without the Appropriations Committee's dedicated professional and associate staff. I extend to all of them my deepest gratitude for their dedication, service, and hard work. In the front office, as we call it, Nancy Fox, my staff director, Maureen Hollihan, Shannon O'Keefe, Jason Gray, Tammy Hughes, Rachel Kaler, Jennifer Hing, Marta Hernandez, Parker Vanderwater, and Tom Delp, and working closely with us in the minority, Shalanda Young and Chris Bigelow and others. We are grateful to all these men and women for their professionalism and dedication. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I urge my college, uh, colleagues to vote yes on the conference support, and I reserve the balance of my time. The gentleman from New Jersey reserves.